Hi guys, welcome to a tour of my Los Angeles home. If you're new here, my name is Dr. Clarissa Shaw. I'm a dentist living in Southern California. And today we're gonna to be doing a part one of my home tour series. So today I'm gonna to be taking you guys through the entrance of my home, the living room and the dining room. I'm going to be showing you all of the details of the furniture, letting you know where I purchased everything from and kind of just explaining the overall decor and aesthetic that I wanted to go for. I'm just gonna go ahead and say I'm filming all of this by myself with a tripod, so bear with me. I'm gonna try to get the best shots possible to show everything off, but it's gonna take some technical maneuvering on my part. Without further ado, let's get started. So when you first enter my home, you're greeted by one big, large living space. The home has more of an open floor plan concept. The only thing that's not open is the upstairs and the downstairs. Those are pretty divided, but the downstairs is pretty much all one big living space. Right in the entrance behind me, we have this entryway piece that has a few pieces of decor and also serves as storage. I'm gonna break it down for you. So the main focal point of the entrance piece is this chest. This we actually got from Home Goods, and we have had this since 20, I want to say 2020, so it's been about three years. We got this when my husband and I were just dating, and he still had his dental school apartment, and not to throw any shade, but he had a very mm, functional style, and essentially when he and his cousin moved in, they were roommates together, they chose everything from Ikea, everything like the really dark black color, and just ordered two of everything. So they really didn't care about what it looked like, they just cared that they had a bed to sleep in and a desk to study on and a bathroom to do all that other business with. So when I came into the picture, I love everything white and airy. My favorite colors are like the cream, neutral, beiges for home. So we knew that when he graduated, he was gonna be staying in the area and we wanted to kind of make some minor updates to the living space. And he didn't have a TV console. He had like a tiny little short table that held his TV speaker and some Xbox games, but he didn't have anything that was tall and that gave functional storage. So we were actually shopping at Home Goods one day and I found this piece here. I remember it was $400, which at the time was a lot of money because we were both students, but I was like, come on, let's get it. Like I'll pitch in 200, you pitch in 200. And I finally convinced him to say yes. So what I love about this piece is it has three doors right here and each door functions as storage. Now I'm not gonna show you completely the inside of everything because it's kind of full of crap right now and I haven't organized all my drawers yet, but I have like some of my candles here. I have things for when I throw um, a little dinner party, you know, like the napkin ring holders and different kind of linens, all of those little accessories, I keep them in here. In the middle compartment, we have all of our games. I have some extra candles. I'm not sure if I mentioned that already yet. More extra candles. And you know, just some knickknacks like that. And then in the last one, we actually keep all of our batteries. This is really cool, I have to show you. All of my batteries are organized in this little plastic box. And I'm pretty sure I was on Instagram one time and they were saying, oh, buy this battery organizer for $20 or for $40. And I was like, what? It's literally a plastic box. So I just got my own plastic box. This has got to be from like Daiso or the 99 cent store. And I just put all my batteries in there. Now I don't have a super huge collection. I know some people really stock every single type of battery, but if I did, it would be so easy to just get another one of these, label it, and then have it in the shelf super organized like that. So as I mentioned before, in our apartment, this was underneath our TV and functioned as our TV media console. We drilled a little hole behind and were able to put all the TV wires in there, but right now it's just functioning as the entrance piece. So let's move on to the decor of the entrance piece. The key decor pieces here are this large textured painting and these two side marble table lamps. Now this textured painting I actually also found from Home Goods. I believe it was $60, which is really affordable because if you look at canvas prints, 
they can be like in the $200 range. So I thought that was really affordable um, for what it looked like. It looks so expensive. It's got a really cute gold rim. And I like that it just fit the neutral decor, yet the texture adds a little bit of dimension. On either side, these table lamps were actually our nightstands in our apartment master bedroom. They're pretty tall. I believe they're 24 or 25 inches, so it's about two feet. And they are made out of solid, marble alabaster i can't remember exactly and they have a really pretty lucite stand now these lamps we got from amazon and they retail for about 80 to 100 dollars a piece and it's funny is when we were looking of course my husband he was like a hundred dollars for a lamp i was like babe you don't know what furniture costs but yes i think they're you know they're great and we can get one a month and so anyway, he went to go look on Amazon and he clicked, he scrolled down and he clicked on the used like new section and found both of these lamps for $20 each. We bought them on the spot. It's literally cheaper than buying them at a thrift store or a swap meet or anywhere. So we were really happy. They were brand new. I guess the person who bought them originally just didn't want them. They sent them back and then Amazon sold them at a discounted price. So I always recommend checking that section when you're looking to buy any piece of furniture or, you know, home accessory that's a little, you know, more on the expensive side. And here I have this fabric lined tray from Target. I really like it because the fabric is that cream color, it has a little bit of texture, and the handles of the tray are brass, so it matches all of the other accents in my home. And then I just got these candles from Ikea, and I just kind of clustered them here for a really cute effect. Now, I don't think I'll ever actually burn these candles, because when you burn the candle, it releases a lot of soot into the air, and we've got this white painting right behind it. In addition, when we moved, we used to light candles all the time in his um, dental school apartment. And when we moved and we unmounted the TV, there was literally a rim of soot from all of the candles that we had lit. So now, if you want to keep a clean home and you want to keep your walls white and everything white, <laughs> I really have to be thoughtful about some of the habits I practice. I could change these for flickering battery-operated candles. That could be on the to-do list in the future, but for right now, this serves really fine for me as a little decor piece here in the center. Then on the side, I've got a little terrarium planter filled with moss balls. This is so cute. Look at this little guy. These little moss balls are from Amazon, and this terrarium planter I actually found from the thrift store. I think it was like a dollar or dollar ninety nine. And originally, I had gotten these little moss balls and I put them in some other black vase thing from IKEA. And it never quite gave me that chic look I was going for. I had seen a lot of inspo on Pinterest. It wasn't until I put them in this little terrarium planter that I thought, oh my gosh, this really looks like a designer expensive piece. And now I'm on a mission to get all the terrarium planters I can from the thrift store, fill them with moss balls and just have them like in every room of my house. I want them in our dental office. I want them everywhere. I feel like it adds the perfect pop of color, a little bit of green, to kind of <laughs> balance out the total neutral landscape I have here, but it's also very subtle. Then right here on the side, I just have a framed picture frame of when I graduated from dental school. Oh, that's me, so happy and <laughs> innocent. I wanna get one that is a fold out frame so I can have my picture and my husband's picture right next to each other, but this I actually brought from my house before and he's a guy, like he doesn't print any of his pictures, he doesn't frame them, so I'm the one that has to do it. I don't have access to those pictures yet, but eventually that's my plan to have the both of us kind of hanging out there and then eventually I'll just repurpose that frame for something else. Another thing I wanted to mention is that my husband changed out all of the light bulbs in the lamps to smart light bulbs, which gives it the capacity to change color upon command. So we have a Google Voice system in our home. And watch this. Hey Google, turn on the living room lights. Hey Google, change the living room lights to red. Pretty cool. So we, it's like surround sound, but for lighting, we change the lighting to match sometimes the movie night. So if we're watching a really scary movie for Halloween, we change the lights to red. If we're watching a nature movie like Avatar, The Way of Water, we change the lights to blue or green. It's really cool and it really gives 
this one living space, kind of multiple dimensions and an at-home theater vibe, even though it's just a formal living room and dining room and kitchen combined. Okay, so moving on, I wanna talk about the living room. This is the room that we spend so much time in. We've got our TV. We Sometimes we eat dinner here at the table. Um, another thing I wanted to mention about this home is it is a rental home, we do not own it. So the one thing I would change about this house would be the flooring. The living room has carpet, which is really comfortable and it's comfy when we sit on the floor, cross-legged and eat, but I personally really don't like carpet because I feel like it's very hard to clean. And initially when I grew up, I grew up with wearing shoes in the house. My husband grew up with absolutely no shoes in the house. So we've adopted that now. Um, <laughs> don't be bringing your shoes in my house now. <laughs> I'm a changed woman. But part of the reason is because it helps to keep the house clean. You know, he and I are both working professionals. I'm not sweeping and mopping every single day. We do that about once a week. So not having shoes in the house prevents us from bringing in a bunch of dirt and then we just wear house slippers. Having said that, We've had incidents where a little bit of red wine spills and I've got to rush to the kitchen and get a kitchen towel and, you know, put my back into it. But I just really don't like carpet and in the future home that we purchase, I'm absolutely going to veto carpet. I'm okay with having a nice big plushy rug, but just for the sake of keeping things clean and having peace of mind, I definitely don't want carpet all over the home. I probably would go with some type of like vinyl plank flooring that's waterproof. And when you have a party, you know, you can't keep track of every single guest telling them like, take your shoes off is the second you come inside if they want to step outside. Sometimes when you have a party, you just have to say, okay, we're going to sweep and mop right after everyone leaves. You know, the house has to also be functional. That's the one thing I don't like about not wearing shoes in the house. I feel like I never go outside anymore because I've got a freaking, I'm like, okay, take off my slippies. Okay, put on my sandals, like for the outside and then vice versa. Whereas at my parents' home, it's so easy for us to go outside and eat, come back in. It's not as much of a hassle. So that's the only thing I don't like about that. Um, and also, of course, when there's a party and I wanna be cute and I wanna wear my matching heels, I can't because they're dirty and I don't want to get carpet dirty. That was a little off topic, but just some backstory. Let's go take a look at the furniture. So the first piece of furniture that's right off the entranceway, literally the door is like right here, right behind me, um, is this gorgeous shoe cabinet. So that was another thing that my husband and I talked about. I said, I don't want a rack of shoes in the front. I feel like it looks terrible. I'm not going to lie. I'm so sorry. I know there's a lot of people that have their home like that, but like it looks really bad. It doesn't look chic. If you don't see it on Pinterest and you wouldn't see it on Architectural Digest, that means it's not cute. And I 1000% wanted for people to take their shoes off, but I said we have to make this look a little more chic. So this shoe cabinet is actually from Ikea and it's pretty inexpensive. This is the taller version. They do have a shorter version, but this taller version has this really cool pull-out drawer. And so we actually used two of these combined as an entrance piece in our apartment. So we've had these since our last apartment together, and now we moved them over here. So in this home, I swear, it's like this little nook right here is the perfect size and was made for this shoe cabinet. Down to the depth of the wall right here, it ends like right at the edge. So this was a perfect piece of furniture to have in this little nook. We put one of the shoe cabinets here and we put the other shoe cabinet in the hallway in front of the garage. So when we come in through the garage, which normally we do because we park our cars there, we just take off our shoes right away and we have our house slippers there. I love that it also helps me organize everything really well. I'm gonna show you the inside of the cabinet. Okay, so the first drawer honestly has a bunch of miscellaneous junk. We moved and then just never <laughs> cleaned it out. Like I said, I'm still in the process of organizing my drawers. That'll be next. But here you could keep like your car keys. I would probably have little dividers with essentials for going out. Like Another thing I keep in this top drawer is an X-Acto knife. So when I get packages delivered, I open them up right away and I get those boxes out of here. Um, so I like to keep an X-Acto knife in this area. 
Now the bottom two drawers are the actual shoe cabinet compartments. And if you get the shorter version of this piece, it just doesn't come with this top drawer. It's only the shoe cabinet, the shoe storage part. So in the first drawer, we can see here, each drawer has two rows for your shoes, which is awesome, a lot of storage space. And in this one, I have all of my disposable house slippers. So I bought a pack of, I would say like, 30 disposable, individually wrapped disposable house slippers from Amazon. They look like this. And I bought these because, like I mentioned, a lot of members of my family are not used to taking their shoes off in the home. And when they come over, you know, I personally hate walking around in socks and I hate walking around barefoot because if I feel a crumb, if I feel a crumb on my foot, it's over for me. So I absolutely need house slippers and I also don't like the idea of walking around in socks because I just, I don't know, I feel like they're getting so dirty. <laughs> like The dirt penetrates the sock. And then there's people like my brother that literally walks outside in white socks and comes back in like no big deal. So anyway, I have all of these disposable house slippers here. If anyone goes outside with them, I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna toss them. And when friends come over, we load up all of their, the shoes that they came with into this drawer, everything's put away, and I give them all these little house slippers. Now, because the house is usually clean because we don't wear the shoes in the house, sometimes if they're fine, I just reuse them. I only toss them if, so you know, someone wore them outside and they're really beat up. Now, another thing I have here are these little shoe covers. I got it from Amazon and it came in a really big pack. These are just the little shoe slip covers. And the reason I had these was because when we were first moving, we were getting a lot of furniture delivered and my husband was always like, tell them to take their shoes off, tell them to take their shoes off. And I said, babe, they're carrying this like 500 pound mattress upstairs. You want them to like do it barefoot or take their shoes off? So I got these so that they could just easily wrap their feet up. They could do their business with, you know, while still being safe because when you're carrying heavy stuff, you really should not be carrying it barefoot or without any shoes on. Um, and anytime we have somebody come in like to take a look at whatever an appliance, um, I always have them these. So I feel like that's just really functional and courteous. Like if you're a stranger, I'm not really gonna ask you to take your shoes off when you come into my home, but I am gonna ask you to wear like a little shoe cover, you know, just to make sure that everything stays clean. And like I said, this is a rental, so we, we're not trying to have the carpet dirty and stained so we can get our deposit back. We want everything, you know, in pretty pristine condition. Um, but if you're my family, then I'll be like, heck yeah, please take your shoes off because we're about that life. Okay, so I'm kneeling down. I'm gonna show you guys the contents of the second drawer. So in here is where we have all of our like house slippers. We have some slippers that are designated for outside. And then here I have a bunch of guest slippers that are designated for members of my family that are coming over all the time. Like my mom has some cute little pink slippers or when my tia comes, you know, I, I, if, I wish I could have <laughs> one for each of my family member and I think eventually I will, but I needed to get some bigger sized ones like for my dad and brother. I think they're both size like 11 or 12 inch shoe. So I wanna have slippers designated for them so when they come, they also feel comfortable and they feel like they're at home. Trust me, I got a lot of pushback when I asked them to start taking their shoes off. Then over here I have some extra little flip-flop sandals. And this is for when people come over and they wanna go outside and have coffee in the morning. Um, we needed some sandals for outdoors. Now, I got all of these at the Dollar Tree, so each pair of these sandals was like $1.25. They have them during the summertime when they have all the summer stuff and the beach stuff. So I highly recommend just picking up like five pairs, five bucks, and you've got these sandals for people to wear when they come over. Now I'm gonna just really quickly break down the decor pieces that I have on top of the shoe cabinet. To my right, I have these three candle holders. These I actually found at a thrift store. They were a chocolate brown color and I spray painted them black. And then sitting on top of them, I have a set of these flickering candles. I think the battery might have died for these ones, but when they turn on, they actually flicker and they're remote control activated, so I can just point the remote and turn them on. It's really nice ambiance for, you know, when we have people over. Moving on, this is a little piece of artwork that I got from Target. I actually got this um, right around the time that we got engaged, and I just thought that the saying was, so precious. It says, family is a little world created by love. And I just feel like it's 100% true, you know, when you're starting to wrap your mind around like 
becoming a family, getting married, getting engaged, you realize that it's love that makes that family. Two total strangers from a different upbringing, sometimes different parts of the world, find each other, fall in love, and it's that love that makes them a family. So I thought that was really cute and I just have it here kind of to remind myself. Then on this side, I have a tiny cute little vase with an olive stem. This I also got from the thrift store. It's a painted vase. You can see a couple of areas where some of the paint is chipping off, but I still thought it was really cute. And I got this little olive stem myself and I just plopped it in there. Match the decor, so I had to have it. Okay, so let's move over to the couches. Now, these two couches we actually got from Ikea. It's the Kivik couch. I'm not sure if that's pronounced correctly, but that's what it looks like. And the funny story about this is when we were moving, we were moving from a one bedroom, one bathroom apartment to a four bedroom home, and we needed a lot of furniture. Now, we were really lucky because I had been like slowly collecting furniture, <laughs> you know, anticipating that I was gonna be moving out of my parents' house when I graduated. And uh, they let me store some of it in their garage. And then when my friend Daphne moved to Texas, she said that she wasn't going to be taking some of the furniture that she had with her because we were in California. And she was just gonna buy new stuff there since the furniture itself was not very valuable and it would cost more to ship it. A lot of the stuff she did sell on Facebook Marketplace, but some of the stuff like this couch didn't sell. And she said, do you want it? She offered it to me and I said, yes, please. So we picked it up. Thankfully, the apartment that we were in before this home did come with one like little garage space. So we were able to put this couch in the garage space. And then when we moved into this home, I just bought a new couch cover from Ikea and we switched it out that way. That way it was nice and clean because it had been in the garage and we did some disinfecting and stuff like that to make sure that there was nothing growing in here. Now, we ended up buying another Kivik to put on this opposite wall right here. And this Kivik is actually a little bit smaller than the Kivik she gave me. So they changed the sizing of the couch in between, <laughs> but oh well. So this one was brand new. I think it was between six to $800. I think probably more like $600. Um, it was really not that expensive for a couch and it matched. It had the same sofa cover, fabric color. So we were really happy. We got our little matching set. And when we move to our next home, I definitely will likely still keep this one. I've found different websites that make customized slip covers for it. So you can get it in a Sherpa fabric. Just, you know, you could just really customize it to look really nice. So I think we'll definitely be keeping this sofa with us for a while and getting a lot more years of use out of it. So we also ended up purchasing the matching ottoman to go with the couch. And this little ottoman just recently, I moved it to kind of the center of the room to give some additional seating for when guests come. I had this little side table from Target. It's a tuck-in side table and it's actually really sturdy. This is like solid marble. So I put this here in case someone wanted to sit down put their glass of water, their glass of wine, and it turns it into its own little, you know, seating section area. If <laughs> I could invest all the money in the world in this home and, you know, if we owned it and I knew we weren't gonna move, I would definitely wanna put two armchairs in this space. I feel like that would really complete everything and give more seating and just look really pretty. But because we're not living here permanently and I don't know what the next living room situation is gonna look like. I don't wanna invest any more money on any furniture until we're in our forever home. So for now, we have the ottoman right here on the nights that my husband and I wanna do movie night and we wanna put our feet up. We just scooch the ottoman close to the couch on that side and we can both put our feet up with the blanket. Another thing that I really love is that this ottoman has storage underneath. So the top comes up and then usually I store like a really thick, big blankie under there. So that way when we fold it up, it's out of sight, but it stays dust free. It's in a cute little container and we've got really easy access to get it when we need it. Another thing I wanted to mention is this ottoman is the matching set to the Kivik. It's got the same exact fabric. Um, for the cover as these couches. So if you're interested in a set like this, you can find it 
on IKEA's website, they have multiple different colors, and um, the ottoman will also come in the same matching fabric. So now let's talk about the pillow situation. These pillows um, I got from Target. I think they're originally listed at $30 a piece. And whenever Target has their sale, I get an alert. And I think these were, I think they were over 50% off. I paid, I think, like $10 a cushion. And so when I saw that sale, I said, I'm going to get them. I thought that they were going to be a lot smaller. And the pillow ended up being huge. Like, this is a big pillow. And it's also not goose down, so it can get a little bit lumpy because it's, I don't know, it's filled with cotton. But I feel like it looks good, gets the job done. Like I said, I'm not investing any more in specific decor pieces unless I know I'm going to keep them forever. <laughs> not really, but like at least for 10 years. And this is really good for now, but I don't know what the future couch situation is going to look like. What I did like is that this is a kind of an ivory off-white color and it matched the curtains in this room and it still, it does the job, right? It's perfect for taking naps. It makes the couch look a little less empty and I do have some matching of these pillows in the dining room, which I'll show you after. When I ordered them, I ordered a bunch of pillows because I thought I was they were going to be small and I was going to be stacking them or you know putting one in front of the other and then they came and they were huge so <laughs> I had to figure out what to do with the other pillows. Now on the other couch I have the original pillows that we had from our apartment. It's not a matching pillow set. I may change it up. I don't know but it kind of looks okay to me. It's not really something that I thought looks bad. Let me know in the comments if you think absolutely I need to have a matching pillow set. Should I pull some of these other ones that I have from the closet out? It's just, I kind of like the different sizing. Let me go ahead and show you those pillows. Okay, so these are the little guys that are on the other sofa. These are both goose down. I got these at TJ Maxx or Home Goods. Now, so they're definitely like higher quality. These ones right here are really nice, really nice and squishy. So we keep them here. I don't know why we kept them here actually, but I don't know, they, they, the color matches perfectly with the couch. So. Let me know, what do you think? I think originally I wanted to get a set of pillows, like a completely different set of pillows with the black rim, white with the black rim, and then they were like $60 a pillow on, I forget, Macy's or Crate and Barrel or something like that, and I said, no, I gotta put my foot on the brake and <laughs> really think clearly about what I want before I make the purchase. So let's talk some of the other furniture pieces in the living room. I have this set of a brass and glass table. This is a coffee table and these are the two side tables on either side of this couch. This actually was my parents set. My mom bought it I think at an auction house. It is an antique um, and it's got tinted black glass on the top. Now <laughs> my husband He's not a fan of glass because he says it scratches easily and he's he doesn't really like this set that much. It's kind of a long rectangular. He would prefer something that's a little more square or round. But like I said, when we were moving in, we needed to buy a whole house, house worth of furniture and we didn't really want to spend all that much money because we were also saving for our wedding and saving and opening our business. So this my mom said we could have and we have it here and I love it. I think it's beautiful. I think it still matches the theme. Will it come with us to our next home? I'm not sure. I might gift it back to her. So we'll see. But this is the coffee table and this is the side table right here. Now these two side lamps I got from Amazon. They come in a set and it's got a black shade, a brass, what is that, base? And then it's got a little bit of gray, so it kind of matches the darker accents of the room. Here I have some candle holders from Target, and I got some electric candlesticks to put in there. This is awesome. Watch this. Remote control activated. Looks really cute when I have a party. I get to just turn it off without <laughs> blowing anything. You don't have to worry about wax dripping. I love them, they're awesome from Amazon. I'll link them in the description box. And then of course I have another little terrarium planter with some moss, that little guy right there, and it, another one of those fabric coated trays from Target. Now behind me I have this gorgeous olive tree. 
This is definitely my favorite faux plant that I own. We own three so far. And this was pretty pricey. It was $250 from Target. But this same or like very similar tree is selling at Crate and Barrel and all those other more expensive furniture stores for five to seven hundred dollars. So two fifty, even though it is a little pricier for you know for a plant for a fake tree, it is totally worth it. It's quite the steal. It comes with its own base with moss covering. It's really tall. I think it's like nine feet tall, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's really really tall. So I highly recommend this one. It's always sold out, but when it goes back on sale for my next home, I definitely want to have another one like upstairs because it's just such a statement piece. Another thing I have here that I wanted to show you guys up close and personal is this cute little basket that we got from Costco, and that's where I keep all of my blankets. So it's this little basket right here. It's woven, it's got a black base, and some white on the top and white handle, and we just keep our little blankies here. It's easy access, they look cute, yet they're kind of like stashed away, and it just kind of matches the overall theme of the house. And then behind, I have a little Glade plug-in. People always ask how my house smells so good, and the answer to that is the plugins. Now, I've used two brands. I've used Febreze and I've used Glade, and the Febreze, uh, okay, both scents smell so good. The Febreze, I feel like, is a little stronger, but it doesn't last as long. You definitely have to replace the cartridges more often, and they're more expensive. It's about $12 for a pack of three. So I have one in the bathroom, I have two in the kitchen, I've got one here. Like, <laughs> if you're monthly replacing these, you're going to be spending like $40 on Febreze plugins. The Glade ones are a little more affordable, they're a little more lightly scented, so that's the only downside, but I feel like they do last a little bit longer, and that is $9 for a pack of five or six. So you can spend 20 bucks a month and your entire house will smell fresh. So it just really kind of depends, you know, the pros and cons. In areas like the bathroom, I do like to have the Febreze plug-in because, you know, if someone goes to do a poo-poo and -poo, number two, you want to make sure that the bathroom stays smelling really nice and fresh and not stinky. Now right here on this side table, we have another one of the matching lamps and then I have this really cute rose centerpiece. A lot of people ask me about this all the time and I actually do it yourself to this rose centerpiece. What I really meant to say is I did it myself, but you know, I DIY'd it. So anyway, I've seen arrangements like this on the Kardashians' Instagram and on, you know, a bunch of different celebrities' pages and on Pinterest, and I really wanted a floral centerpiece like this, a rose centerpiece. Now, eventually I might get the Forever Roses one, but those are also very, very expensive. They can be like in the hundreds of dollars. <laughs> so for now, until I'm ready to make the investment, I wanted to get a similar look. So it's actually two pieces. The bottom is a wooden serving bowl that I got from Target, and it's in like a bleached oak color. And then the top part is a little half dome piece of foam with some silk flowers attached to the bottom. And then voila, I literally just set it down on top and you've got yourself your little designer rose centerpiece. Now this top flower piece I did not make myself. You very well could with a piece of foam and some sticks and silk flowers, but this piece I actually got from the same vendor that I got my wedding flowers from. And if you're curious to know, you know, how much I paid, how I did all of the wedding flowers myself for a fraction of the cost, make sure you check out my wedding series. I don't have the video up just yet at the time of filming this one, but uh, just make sure that you set your alerts and you subscribe and that we can get alerted when I put it up. It's got a lot of really good juicy information. Information. So this is kind of a mini version of the centerpieces that I got for my wedding. The ones I got were greater in diameter, but I saw that they had a little mini version and I just ordered one with the exact intention of making this cute little do-it-yourself flower thing. Now these are really cute. I might have these also like in our office in the future. I want to have multiple for the rooms upstairs, but like I said, I'll get around to it add it to the never-ending to-do list. All right, let's talk curtains. I actually just stood up on the couch, 
so I could show you some details of the curtains. Now, all of these curtains and the curtain rods are from Amazon, and in my opinion, they were pretty affordable. Now, I've seen some other YouTube videos where <laughs> the commentator says, these curtains are so affordable and they look so expensive. And then I go to look on Amazon because I'm like, oh yeah, they're cute. And they're like $300 a panel. And I was like, okay. To me, that's kind of still pricey. I understand that it's a little cheaper than having a custom made curtain like at the shade store made, which could be in the thousands of dollars. So in that sense, it is cheaper. But when I tell you that these curtains are definitely affordable, <laughs> I mean it. I think each of these curtain panels these, so these sheer ones, for sure, I think it was like $20 for a pack of two from Amazon. The curtain rods themselves, they're plain black. Um, I think they might have been like between $20 and $30, depending on the length of the rod. And then these panels, I can't remember if they were, I think it might have been $90 for two of them. So they might have been around like $45, $50. Now, in my opinion, $50 on a panel and then you have to buy like 10 of them. I do think that is still kind of pricey, but in the curtain world, Technically, that is a little more affordable, and I could have probably gone with a different fabric or gone with curtains from Ikea that would have fit the vibe perfectly and been more affordable, but just at the time, I didn't know that Ikea had like really cute curtains until after. So anyway, we have these panels right here. I wanted to go again with an all-white theme. The shears, the linen shears are crisp white, and these curtain panels are again like an off-white ivory color and they're actually a velvet fabric which feels really nice to the touch. They're not blackout curtains though so when we're watching TV during the day and we get the light um, shining on the TV it doesn't block any of that out. If I owned this home I would get some of those blackout rollers that are remote control operated and I would actually have them on the windows so that way when we come home from work and we want some privacy or we want to darken the room we just push that remote control and the rollout blinds the blackout blinds would go down now again because it's a rental I don't want to really invest that money into getting something that's specifically fit for this window that I can't take to my next home so what we do now when we come home is you know in the evening is I'll just close the curtains now uh, this window faces to the street and there's a lot of families here that love to walk around and I don't like people being able to look into my home. Upstairs when no one can look into the room, yeah, well, I'll keep you know the sheer curtains open, but down here, I don't know, I just don't like the feeling of people looking in or being able to look in and kind of see what's going on. So the sheer curtains let the light come in, but they also keep it super private. You go outside, you can't see what's going on in here. And if I'm, you know, walking around like in my bathrobe or my underwear or whatever, coming downstairs to get a glass of water, I don't have to be scared that people are looking in you know, and spying on me. <laughs> I know it sounds kind of paranoid, but I just, I like the privacy. And these curtains here, like I said, they provide privacy when the lights are on. So if it's dark outside and the lights are on inside, you can see through the shears a little more. So then we just kind of boop, cover this up right here and then we get the privacy that we want. I'll give you guys a little peek. See, that's the outside. It's a cute view, but I don't want people looking in my house. <laughs> At least not strangers when I'm not home. Like, okay, I know this is a house tour, but it's not the same thing as someone like snooping around. Nobody snoops around like with good intention. So the last piece of decor I wanted to mention to you guys that's hanging over the couch is this gray and gold painting that I got from Home Goods. I think it was on sale and because the frame was a little bit damaged and I might've gotten it for about $50. Let's look at the TV console. Okay, so on the other side of the couch is the TV and the TV console. Now the TV, my husband's an expert on all of that. I really don't know any details about it. I don't even know how big it is. I think it might be 76 inches. Not 100% sure, but we needed a long TV console to kind of offset the big size of the TV because you can't have a huge TV and then like a little baby console underneath. So these are actually two chests from Ikea. We bought two of them. One is here and one is here. And we ended up attaching them together with gold legs. They have the option of attaching two pieces together with 
you know, the brass legs on the bottom. And this wood piece here on the top is actually a stick-on piece. It's an additional piece that you can buy for this particular piece of furniture. Otherwise, it would just be white. We got this because we thought it made it look a little more elegant and upscale <laughs> and a little less, like, you know, cheapy. For the decor, starting off on this side, I have these two lanterns and I do have some electric battery operated candles on the bottom. Um, I do turn them on when we have, you know, movie night or guests over, just kind of like to set the mood around the home. I got these from Target and I actually got these quite a while ago. I think I might have gotten them like four or five years ago. Like I said, I was collecting stuff <laughs> way before I had my house. I would just see stuff and say, oh look, I have it. And then also too with Target, stuff sells out pretty quickly. So if you see something that you really love, I would say just get it because it's probably not going to come back in stock. Right in the middle, we have the sound bar, and then over here to the side, we have some bookends and a couple of books. One of the books is our engagement book from our engagement shoot where I uploaded all of the photos, and then I also put the story <laughs> of how we almost got stranded in the desert. So we have this here. It's kind of like a coffee table book for when guests come over if they want to just kind of flip through it. And then right here on the side, I have these really cute little urn vase sets and just some greenery. I've been obsessed with little vase sets. You've got the big vase and then you've got the baby vase, but they're like matching. So like a regular and the mini. And I just love them. I have them everywhere in my home. I have like two other sets of those kind of dispersed along because I just think they're so cute. All right guys, so I know I said I was going to do a dining room tour you know, during the same video, but I feel like I've been blabbing for a long time. This video is going to be super lengthy, so instead I'm just going to give you a cute little sneak peek of the dining room, and I'll be including the dining room with the kitchen tour in the next video. Thank you guys again so much for watching. If you have any questions about the furniture, I'm going to try to have every single piece and decor item linked in the description box or on my LTK. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate your support and thanks again for stopping by, getting to know me, and getting to know my living room a little bit more. Again, I'm Dr. Clarissa. I'll see you guys next time.